Well, hello there and welcome to the Bedroom of the Dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you Stelfers for December 30th, the Day of Laconic Authority. And laconic meaning uh, using few words in a curt, blunt, or concise manner. And here at the top of the page is a visual representational image of the Day of Laconic Authority. We have a bit of a head scratcher here. I'm not quite sure what it is. It looks to be some kind of I don't know maybe a blossom that only the uh, hooked nose hummingbird can pollinate if you like or perhaps it's some kind of uh, exotic wood like abstract branch that might be carved into the likes of a, a didgeridoo by an Australian indigenous tribe I don't know <laughs> it seems a little bit of a reach but it could be who's to say that being said visual representation uh, visual representational image aside uh, not altogether all too important no what is important around these here parts is it's December 30th and hence it's somebody's birthday so if it's your birthday today I just want to say happy birthday that's what's important wishing you a happy birthday uh, that being said a lot of times these videos find folks late and so if that's the case I want to say I hope you had a happy birthday but for everybody else who's joining us randomly or more ideally to celebrate the December 30th birthday I just want to say hello welcome and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before I dive in with the redirect, something I like to do around these here parts, and that's roll some dice. This is the Diecast birthday broadcast, so I like to live up to the namesake and roll some dice. But I do so more importantly for synchronicity's sake. And you know what, folks? I rolled us a six and a one again, even though I was rolling that thing in my palm, as you saw. Six and a one for a seven. All right, let's go with it, shall we? Uh, it was what I rolled. So what is synchronicity? You're probably wondering. Uh, well, my friends, a lot of times we get out in this world and we're very laser or singular a focus. And we kind of got the blinders on to the things that are going on around us. Uh, that said, uh, this is kind of an experiment or an exercise in to taking those blinders off because I've heard it said that the universe or the powers that be will put things in our path to help us realize our goals or our aspirations but if we got those blinders on usually we'll move right past them without giving them any notice so this is an experiment or an exercise like I said into taking those blinders off and picking up on those things that are around us and we do so with a very intense focus here something we are apt to not miss that be a six and a one for a seven now, you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled for you. The intention is there, but it's probably ideal you take your own set of dice so you can ascribe directional values to number sets and time values with which to go in those directions. Once you've established all that, pick a spot to start from, I don't know, say the town square, uh, wherever you feel the impulse to go towards, uh, you set out. But like I said, take those blinders off, all right, and start soaking up everything around you. It's kind of like... When somebody says, oh, you notice that car, like the Mazda Miata, I think I've said in the past. And then you start noticing Mazda Miatas everywhere. Like uh, it's some kind of, uh, I don't know, universal thing that's just bringing them all to you. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is they were probably there all along. That's right. So just see what you see, all right? Start soaking things up. And I say that because the day might just start to take on a theme. Let's mention this eclectic image here I brought up as the visual uh, representational image, the thing that we can't necessarily identify. Maybe you start seeing abstract objects like that all over the place as you're walking through town on your first, or maybe not even your first, just this whole endeavor here. Uh, so take note of that. It's just like, oh, there's another one. There's another abstract thing. There's another one. You might just start to kind of see, taste, touch, feel, smell, or hear a little bit of the magic in that case. But let's say you're on your first, uh, your first directional value time limit. You're not seeing anything. You get to the end of it. You're on a street corner. Well, you know what? Stop. Uh, start get eagle-eyed, you know, start to get eagle-eyed, rather take in the things around you and see what you spy. Maybe you just happen to see a street sign and you might so happen to be on 61st Avenue. Could be. Old 61st in Lexington, maybe. Well, that said, roll yourself a dice, see where to go next. Maybe you head on out. And maybe you just, at the end of your time value, happen to notice, oh, you're in front of a building with 
I don't know, maybe a seven. Number seven building. What's the building? I would say go on in there, see what it is. Maybe it just so happens to be a florist. You head on in and this would be the perfect opportunity to see if this person can help you identify the blossom that it might just be visual representational image. Show them this video when they ask what you're doing here. Hey, I'm just here on a synchronicity walk trying to see what the universe has in line for me. And they're like, really? They're like, hey, take a look at this here. Is this a blossom that you're aware of? And it's like, oh, that just so happens to be the hook nose uh, hummingbird variety there. Could be, could be. If that happens to be the case, let me know down in the comments there. That said, uh, maybe they're just like, really? You're not here to buy anything else? No, I'm not in the market for any kind of floral arrangement today. No, not, no, sir, not on my birthday. <laughs> like, really? Not even on your birthday? That's right. Uh, that's, I'm here on synchronicity. But you know what? Maybe nobody else is either, and it just so happens to be that person's birthday too. And you know what? It's not out of the realm of possibility. They're apt to close up shop because they own it and they can and they go out and join you. And you know what? That'd be perfect because it's been said also that the more people who are focusing on the same thing are apt to help a little bit more manifestation. That's right. So get on out there. See, taste, touch, feel, smell the magic if it happens to be a florist. And I think you can understand why I brought it up. Because if there's anything I can hope for you on your birthday, it's that you're getting some magic out of things that's right and you're out there enjoying yourself now you might not see any of these synchronicities or coincidences as people like to call them but you know what at the very least you're out there getting some exercise that's right seeing what you see expanding your horizons and getting those blinders off all right i think you got the idea let's dive in with your birthday read that's why you're here all right your month is december your day the 30th your sign is seven to nine degrees capricorn of the capricorn one period specifically and your quality and elements is cardinal earth all right december 30th the day of laconic authority those born on December 30 can get their point across with very few words. I could take a lesson, right? Uh, usually adherents to established traditions and methods. They put their faith in the tried and true. Extremely valuable people in running a business or organization. They dislike inefficiency and waste of all types. Also, December 30 people quickly recognize faults in a system and work methods and are adept at eliminating or at least minimizing them. This does not mean that December 30 people are necessarily uptight individuals or that they have problems relaxing. On the contrary, few enjoy a good meal or a fun evening with friends more than those born on this day. It is precisely because they have a great deal together at work that they can come home and freely express themselves. And December 30 people are gracious and generous, but don't, but don't cross them, rather, or oppose their right to rule, it says with an exclamation point. Indeed, most born on this day just have to be the boss. There's no other way. They must, however, beware of adopting a know-it-all attitude and dogmatically, rather, adhering to fixed principles, which can arouse great antagonism in others. Not surprisingly, many December 30 people themselves have serious problems with authority, not because they are rebellious per se, but rather find those in charge to be incompetent or ineffective. They often begin to think about how they might be able to better run the show themselves. But a good point about December 30 people is that they generally think along constructive, not ego-satisfying lines. For them, the important thing is not the power or the domination, but that the best job possible is being done. And December 30 people hate mess and chaos. Often this leads them to adopt a more Spartan existence, or at the very least, to stow their possessions in another room and close the door. As they are not overly fastidious, they may choose to limit their accumulation of goods and thereby create less mess. Others may view this as evidence of their being tight with money. And most often this is not the case, for December 30 people know how to spend when they want 
or when they need to, even if that means going into the red. Their innate frugality, however, usually keeps them from wasting money and leads them to get the best possible deal. Frustrations and worry can keep December 30 people awake at night. Upsetting situations do not sit well with their usually taciturn personalities. What suits them best is to work their way out of a given problem. Unfortunately, when met with difficult problems caused by another's ignorance or blundering, at least as they see it, it says in parentheticals, those born on this day can become extremely agitated. In order not to waste their own precious energy, December 30 people must learn acceptance of what they cannot change and the discipline to turn their thoughts to more constructive matters. All right, how about that for a particularly focused birthday breakdown, but within that focus, they really expanded the scope there. All right, so that being said, I'd like to provide a little bit of a commentary on what we've just read, maybe make some connections with days previous or the period in general, and uh, just elaborate on it with my own thoughts on occasion. So let's dive into it, shall we? December 30, the day of laconic authority. You like getting your point across in few words, the reading claims, and you adhere to established traditions, and you're extremely valuable in running a business or organization, considering your aversion to waste and inefficiency. All right, you're also apt to quickly recognize what works and what doesn't, ostensibly owing to your value in the workplace, I would argue. Uh, in addition to that, you're considered to have uh, such so-called conservative-natured approaches uh, so well in hand that when all has been said and done, you're apt to let your hair down and freely express yourself more so than even the more liberally-oriented counterparts and peers in this area for a surprising consideration in my mind. Uh, because I think going into this, most folks might think you're a little uptight, uh, but I like that they say you're not. Uh, but the reading relates that you aren't uh, to be underestimated for the gracious and generous facets of your nature. You have a penchant for ruling the roost, they said, um, which the reading warns not to let evolve or devolve, depending upon your position on the matter, into a know-it-all kind of attitude, which is actually kind of a common through line here for the Capricorn period. Uh, mention of your principles being preached as if a be-all, end-all kind of personal religion or a dogma is also warned against. And all told, the breakdown in the breakdown there is an ironic, if not relatively uh, predictable, turn in relating that you yourself may have problems with authority. All right, but the reason for as much is where my assumptions uh, were upended. All right, as you're more apt to uh, rebel against the system system because of the faults and uh, ineffectiveness of as much uh, that you find with the leadership versus a so-called thirst for the throne there uh, to which uh, ego is really removed from as much and this I found really interesting because like I said I assumed differently because that's typically not why people thirst for power all right let's see I would argue that maybe if the ship was running at peak efficiency I'd like to hope that you'd be perfectly content with not being in charge. Uh, that said, uh, having said that, you can be frugal, but when it comes from a pragmatic Spartan approach to need versus want, uh, frustration and upset can also wear on you as you work to find solutions to problems. But again, waste of your time and energy seems to be a pressing concern in that area too based on what the breakdown had to say. Uh, so I like the suggestions of acceptance and discipline aimed at the matters that are out of your control. So it's a very interesting day insofar as they really appended a lot of my own assumptions about as much. Because uh, like I said, it seemed like a very conservative natured kind of individual, but she came across very liberal too on the other side of it and very pragmatic in a lot of terms too. Uh, so that being said, that's what I had to say about the breakdown. So let's move on to your numbers and your planets. Let's see what we have to see about that. The old astrology here and the numerology. Those born on the 30th of the month are ruled by the number 3 as 3 plus 0 
equals 3. And by the planet Jupiter, the expansive planet Jupiter, those ruled by the number 3 tend to rise to the highest positions in their particular sphere. And since Saturn rules the sign of Capricorn, December 30 people usually display serious, measured, and patient qualities in moving toward their goals. However, their Jupiterian influences may urge them to expand faster than is possible for them at a given time, causing frustration. And since those ruled by the number three characteristically love their independence, December 30 people often do best working for themselves or in positions of autonomy where few external rules or limits are placed on them. All right, hey, what I had to say here about your numbers and your planets. Uh, let's see, turn the page here in the notes. Let's get to it here. Uh, the number three in the expansive planet Jupiter for a drive to rise to the highest points or in positions in your particular sphere, uh, at least from a number three uh, aspect there. Uh, as far as Jupiter's concerned, it's an ex it offers an expansive philosophical outlook, optimism, and in some cases, even luck, it's been said. Uh, but when the constrictive planet Saturn uh, comes into the mix with its moral responsibility and strong personal values and a need to exert authority in some cases, conflicts and frustrations can arise. Uh, they have presented themselves uh, in the last period to a lot of frustration for those folks. Um, and it was kind of funny because I thought I was kind of past that, uh, that kind of period, that, that kind of influence there. Uh, and as it turns out, ironically, in a uh, funny kind of way, at least ironic that way, um, like I said, I thought I was kind of finally past all of that, having to deal with that particular uh, juxtaposition there, um, or dichotomy more properly said. But I definitely see some of the more favorable aspects of this rulership with you. Uh, assuming you're one to lend credence to astrology, naturally, because uh, you're apt to seek your own independence with as much. Uh, perhaps that owes more to the number three and uh, for a little additional numerology facet, which doesn't often get mentioned uh, usually, sparse as it is. Um, so, and uh, what else do we have to say here? You, um, I don't know, there's so many frustrations that lend to the Saturn and Jupiter aspect there. The here I didn't necessarily see that so much. It seemed more like your frustrations had to do more with uh, other people's issues. They had to do with the working environment that you were in. And like, as long as it's working great, I'm in a good uh, set position. Whereas with the other folks who had that uh, Jupiter Saturn rulership, it was more about frustrations presenting in their lives, maybe even on a psychological aspect there. And here I didn't see so much of that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's not a, a facet of it. So let's dive in more. Uh, with the read there by moving on into your tarot. All right, the third card of the major arcana is the Empress, symbolizing creative intelligence. She is the perfect woman, the ultra-feminine Mother Earth nurturer, who embodies our dreams, hopes, and aspirations. And the card represents positive traits of charm, grace, and unconditional love, but also negative traits of vanity and affectation, as well as intolerance for imperfection. Interesting. All right. Yeah. The old tarot there is one of the more eclectic of the new age metaphysical ideologies. But hey, you know what? I think it's kind of an interesting thing to put in the book. So we're going to have to take it home with us. Uh, but yeah, let's see what they had to say here. If I can make any connotations for the, uh, the card applying to the breakdown there. Uh, the Empress for creative intelligence and an embodiment of dreams, hopes, and aspirations for positive qualities of charm, grace, and unconditional love, like they said, but negatives of vanity and intolerance for, per, in, for imperfection. Uh, for this card, I had a surprisingly hard time lining it up with the breakdown to a large extent. Um, the intolerance for imperfection stands out if we associate that with recognizing faults and being driven to rectify inefficiency, I would say. But I don't necessarily see that as a negative, as they put it here in the tarot. So um, as long as things aren't getting out of control, if you're taking that a little too far, then eh, maybe so. Um, as for gr uh, charm, grace, and unconditional love, as the, for the positives, there was that, uh, that aspect of you letting your hair down when the day was done, and uh, your free-form uh, means of 
free expression there. When uh, so I, maybe that has something to do with the charm and the, and the expression of, <laughs> or you know, the charm and grace. But other than that, I didn't necessarily see that being mentioned in the breakdown either. But I'm surprised that the card doesn't match up more. They usually do a really good job of uh, lining up with this. And it's not like they choose one. It all lines up with the numbers there. Uh, but again, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Uh, but if it speaks more to you than it does to me, that's what's important. Maybe this spoke to you uh, in, in spades, as they say, in the card theme there. Uh, with that being said, that's been your tarot. Hopefully we took a little bit of something from it, me expanding on it, lined some things up for you more. Uh, maybe it lend a little more credence to the idea that you like things to be efficiently done. And if that's the case, let's move on to your health. Enough talking about it, guy. Let's get into it. Those born on December 30 should keep active and not let themselves slip into patterns of self-pity or depression. And although they may at times find it difficult to motivate themselves, they should make an effort to program regular physical exercise into their lives. Furthermore, it is a good idea for them to schedule regular checkups with a family physician rather than ignore symptoms or hope that they will go away. December 30, people must be aware of the prickly side of their nature, which can arouse opposition and an accompanying negativity directed toward them. Such bad feelings through uh, disturbing their psyche or making them feel disliked can have an equally negative effect on their health, notably in areas of insomnia, skeletal or muscular rigidity, headaches, and other manifestations of stress very interesting all right hey what i have to say about your health here uh, let's find it the health avoid slipping into self-pity or depressive patterns um interesting uh i didn't really pick up on that in the breakdown so much uh so maybe it's something that they just didn't have time to get into or perhaps it's one of the uh saturn jupiter conflicts if you want to lean into the astrology angle uh, or just general frustration. Uh, I don't know. So, uh, with the things that might not be running well with the, with the job or in your personal life there. You know, things aren't being very efficient. I don't have a room that can contain all my stuff that I can close the door on, as they said. Who's to say? Uh, exercise is an important outlet to drum up motivation, they said. Um, no diet necessarily to speak of when it comes to this focus on your mental welfare a lot of times they'll drill down real heavy on the diet also the exercise not just uh the uh the uh, quality of it to say moderate or intense vigorous here they didn't really make too much of a mention of it um or the diet so much uh but yeah they kind of ditch the diet on occasion if the psychological facet works into it uh what else do we have here uh, so they didn't drill down on that too much in the breakdown, but the stressors they came up with, they focused on that quite a bit. Um, and that's kind of that kind of has a little bit of a through line here in the Capricorn period, because these folks they like to be uh, workaholics in uh, in no short order a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, what else do I have to say? Uh, certainly not to the extent of physical manifestation, but if it's mentioned, well, perhaps take note of it. Maybe these things do manifest uh, when you don't have the opportunity to work them through. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, mention of your skeletal system to take care of as much. That is a Capricorn body area, so that's been coming up quite a bit. They don't know how you necessarily take care of your skeleton outside of, uh, I don't know, getting in your calcium. I don't know, but if you, if you find a way or know how, then there you go. Uh, though they have mentioned stretching and calming exercises on occasion. Uh, at least mentioned in similar cases for other folks in this period. Uh, and uh, they did mention the graceful element with your tarot. And uh, grace has come up before. And uh, they mentioned exercises like yoga and tai chi for as much. So maybe that's something you find of interest if you need to calm things down a little bit. That being said, that's been your health, so let's move on to some advice. All right, some advice for you here. Oh, for the laconic authority. Remember, laconic meant using few words in a curt, blunt, or concise manner. Well, here we go with the advice. Avoid being blunt and take time to explain yourself. Be careful of arousing resentment through an overly rigid system of rules and beliefs. And try to put the past behind you and learn to forgive. By being more accepting, you will eliminate many problems. 
All right, hey, I would say that advice had a lot of value. Uh, some of the things we probably heard a little bit here in the breakdown, etc., but uh, there's still a lot of importance in there, I would say. But what I have to say, avoid being blunt and explain yourself, all right? Communicate your desires slash your directions if you happen to be in a leadership position there. Help others understand where you're coming from. It seems to be a little bit of a common theme with some of the Capricorn days here. Uh, diplomatically too, all right? Avoid antagonism and frustrations if such methods result in change, I would say. Uh, even if doing so is its own frustration. Maybe you don't like having to communicate things to people. Uh, that said, uh, which one are you willing to cave into? Happen to uh, uh, deal with the repercussions of people not uh, you know, leaning into your system or communicating why it works and how to do it? I don't know, maybe the, uh, the former is a little bit easier. Communicating your thing, so now you get the result you want. I would try that out if you don't already. Um, so uh, which are you willing to cave into? Oh, in communicating, you know, it's not necessarily an evil. Which evil are you willing to cave? Uh, communication is not really an evil, though it probably feels like it sometimes. Uh, which dovetails nicely into arousing antagonism with your rigid rules, if they happen to be rigid. So you'd probably have to ask other people if they think as much because you might not think they are uh, so don't be inefficient yourself with if uh, efficient rules that don't turn results out uh, especially if people don't want to cater to them they might be efficient but if other folks aren't doing it boom it's lost right uh, so I wrote here just like communism is a novel philosophical idea until you introduce the human animal to live by it it just doesn't work at all in that case because there's only going to be a few people who are in the rulership of as much and don't realize the philosophical idea through till its ultimate end there. So communism doesn't work from that respect there. Neither do your efficient rules if people aren't willing to dive into it. I think you get the idea. Uh, in the event, they also said be accepting and eliminate your problems, which is uh, easy to say, even harder to do. But I would say uh, even entertaining and trying it out a little bit is probably a step in the right direction. Uh, you're, even if you manifest just a little bit of it, there you go. You might be able to abandon some of your issues or some of the facets of those issues. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, all of which might help with that insomnia if you happen to have it. If those things are weighing on your minds and keeping you up at night. If you can just ditch a few of them, you'll be in good shape. Or I'd say put your mind on something else that makes you bored. <laughs> that's right. So in any event, that's what I'd say about your advice. So let's move on to your meditation. That's right. You get a meditation here for your birthday. Here we go. The human condition applies to yourself, too. All right. So one more time. The human condition applies to yourself, too. All right. That's your birthday, your meditation. I'm not going to throw some kind of spin or interpretation on as much. Or it would defeat the purpose now, wouldn't it? That's right. So once more, the human condition applies to yourself, too. Now, with your meditation in the can, let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right. Let's see where you got the bulk and where you're ostensibly atrophied. That's right. Your strengths and your weaknesses. Your strengths, you're highly capable, you're pragmatic, and you're realistic. All right. What's your weaknesses? Oh, what could those be? Did you pick up on them in the breakdown there and such? Your weaknesses, you're bossy. You're hypocritical and you're closed. Oh, hypocritical. I think that's the first time this one's come up. And interestingly, I didn't really pick up on that anywhere in the breakdown or other in, in the other areas. I don't know. We're all hypocritical, though, to some extent, aren't we there? Bossy, I think, is a new one, too. You know, interesting. I would, interestingly, I would say, if these are things that you want to curtail or bring down, I think your strengths are going to get you there. You're highly capable, you're pragmatic, and you're realistic. I think you're going to be doing the work. You said you take the ego out of it as long as it helps make the machine more efficient. Well, you know what? pragmatic and realistic those are going to get you there and i would say those owe in no small part to having a philosophy like that and highly capable well you know what you're going to get your weaknesses uh curtailed if you want to i also like to argue though that the weaknesses aren't always so much so it just depends on the situation you know what maybe you got to be bossy with certain people you know some folks they they don't get anything uh done unless somebody's 
crack in the whip, so to speak. Um, but hypocritical, I don't know, maybe a crack in the whip for the wrong reasons. I don't know. Or, uh, and it says you're closed to, like, sometimes we got to be open to other ideas. Um, that being said, try out some diplomacy. And that's right. Lean the other way from being the bossy thing. I think we drilled down on that quite a bit with the advice. So uh, that being said, I also like to say, don't abandon our weaknesses completely because they make us who we are. That's right. So that being said, those have been your strengths and your weaknesses. So let's dive in to those born on this day. And when we get into those born on this day, not only do we get to see who shares your company, but something I like to uh, kind of segue into and use this as an opportunity for, and that is examining, finding out our passions or figuring out our passions. Uh, too often I get out in the world and meet folks and ask them what they do and more importantly, if they like it. And a lot of times they don't. And I think it's completely understandable because uh, you know you get into a job right out of school you start climbing the corporate ladder maybe where you're maybe you're just stuck trying to make ends meet there's certainly no time to put into work to figure out the things that drive us on you know and it's so that's is it certainly takes time and effort to do those things I would say a lot of times it takes time and effort just to figure out what we like let alone what our passions are and so I think this is the perfect opportunity to not only see what other folks did to get in the book if you like, but to, um, I don't know, maybe drum up our own passions by what they did. Uh, at least uh, if we can't take inspiration from it, and maybe me putting the bug in your ear about it's going to help you get busy with as much. It'll stir up the fires of inspiration. So let's dive into it, all right? We start with Rudyard Kipling, the British Nobel Prize winning poet, journalist, and novelist, and novelist rather, and uh, he's responsible for writing The Jungle Book. We also have Paul Bowles, a writer of The Sheltering Sky, and who's also a composer. We have Ben Johnson, a Canadian Olympic gold medal winning, world record setting sprinter. And it says, medal and record revoked for steroid use. Oh, how about that? He was trying to be a little too efficient, it sounds like. All right, we have Alfred Einstein, a musicologist and writer uh, of a work called Mozart. We also have Sandy Koufax, uh, the Dodgers three-time Cy Young award-winning pitcher, and a National League four-time strikeout, five-time ERA leader, and a baseball manager. We also have Bo Diddley, there we go, an influential blues rock and roll guitarist, a singer and a songwriter. We also have Al E. Smith, a New York governor and presidential candidate. We also have Patti Smith, the singer and songwriter. Tracy Ullman, a British uh, mimic, actress, singer, and improvisational comedian. We also have Carol Reed, a British film director of The Third Man and Oliver, uh, exclamation point, uh, and a producer. We have Elaine Chappell, a French chef, and uh, says Nobel Cuisine Innovator and a restaurateur. And it also says Chapel, which might be the name of their restaurant or a book that they wrote. We also have Titus, the Roman Emperor, uh, Dmitry Kabelesvesky, uh, a Roman, uh, Russian composer, rather, uh, Jack Lord, a film TV actor of Hawaii Five O fame, Joseph Pay, uh, Pay, Joseph P. Hoar, H O A R Hoar, <laughs> uh, U.S. Marine General of the U.S. Central Command Chief, uh, or U.S. Central Command Chief. We also have Burt Parks, a TV personality and Miss America competition host. We also have Russ Tamblin, a dancer and an actor. Joel Katzman, an Amsterdam harpsichord builder. Joe Van Fleet, a film actress. Louis, uh, Louis R. Bruce, a Bureau of Indian Affairs commissioner. I'll tell you what, I recognized a few names in there, surprised by a couple. Bo Diddley, for sure. I hadn't heard that name in a while. Uh, that being said, I know it's probably a big-ass tall order to take inspiration from other people's accomplishments, but like I said, maybe putting the bug in your ear about it uh, help you stir up the fires. And if you already have a passion figured out, I don't know, maybe help you figure out how to make it financially viable. But if you got that figured out too, hey, like I said, maybe it's just interesting to find out what lottery with, with, what lottery you drew with who shares your birthday. Uh, that being said, that essentially rounds out your birthday read. Except to say, your season is winter, your sign is Capricorn. For the Capricorn 1 period specifically, and your quality and elements is 
a cardinal earth. And like I said, I don't know that we made an association with that uh, abstract blossom or woodwork, whatever it may have been. Uh, but hey, that's for greater minds to figure out. Uh, it's not necessarily altogether all too important either, like I said. But this has been December 30th, the day of laconic authority from the secret language of birthdays by Derek Goldschneider and you Stelfer. So I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description. If you're interested in picking up a copy, finding out more about other birthdays, zodiac signs and etc., getting through it a bit quicker than I can for you. Uh, helps support the channel and it's going to be easier than uh, having to type it in in a browser there if you're interested in it. Also makes a great coffee table book if you're having company over. Somebody likes to let your hair down at the end of the day. And you know what? helps you get the ice broken if maybe you don't have the energy to do as much. That's right. It's going to get the conversa conversation flowing for better or for worse, for sure. But that said, the book altogether, not all too important. Um, what is important, like I said at the top, wishing you a happy birthday. So once again, happy birthday. And uh, you know what? Lest I forget your daily numbers. That's right. Get out there and let the universe speak to you, show you it's with you on your path. See, taste, touch, smell, hear, uh, all the senses, intuit a little bit of magic, and you understand why I brought it up. You come across as a very down-to-earth uh, kind of person based on the breakdown, so I know you might not be too interested in it as much, but hey, I'm just floating it out there for you to help you expand your horizons that's right now if you're uh, just joining us randomly we're here to celebrate the uh, december 30th birthday i just want to say i hope you enjoyed yourself and thanks for joining and i hope to see you on your birthday as well but once again just uh, for your december 30 folks i want to say happy birthday once more i hope this spoke to you and if it did you got some uh, something of interest from it but once again like i said what's important here is wishing you a happy birthday. So get out there, be efficient, uh, keep cracking that whip, so to speak, if and it needs to be done. But yeah, that's right. Do what you need to do and uh, work through those things that keep you up at night. You got to get your sleep. So adjust course where you need to, and I hope you find the ability to do so. That's right. And figure out your passions in the bargain there too. So once again, happy birthday. Take care of yourselves.